to see you. My name's Mike from Inspireworks and hey, look at this image behind me. Isn't this such an amazing looking place? This is a place in Peru in South America and it's a little town called Trujillo. Now, the reason why we've got this image behind us today is because the music we're gonna learn comes, the rhythm we're gonna learn comes from this place. And the instrument we're gonna learn is called the cajon. And you play this rhythm on the cajon. You play lots of other things on the cajon, but this we thought we'd teach you this rhythm as the first thing. What is a cajon? Cajon spelled C-A-J-O-N. Well, the cajon is basically a box. And I've got one here to show you. Here is a cajon. You see, it's basically a box, and you can see it's got um, four sides, well, six sides, like you expect this box to have. And you can see with this cajon, the front side is a different color to the rest of it and there's a hole at the back and if you can see in the back there can you see there's some wires um, going along that inside there that's because when I play my cajon it, those wires create a nice buzzy sound so I can get when I hit near the top there I get a buzzy sound but then when I hit a little bit lower I get more of a bass sound to it as well so we're going to learn how to play the cajon because the cajon is a very very popular instrument loads of people these days are, are playing them but you know often people are never quite sure what to do with them so this is the idea of this we're going to show you exactly what to do so i've got two cameras here set up so hopefully you'll be able to see exactly my cajon nice and clearly if i change to that camera there we go so here is my cajon here now with the cajon first thing you sit on top of it okay and sometimes you might find it easiest if you just lean back slightly on the cajon that's often what i do just stops you getting a sore back so a few different places first one is along see where i've got these black um screws in here i'm just going to put my fingers just slightly lower than that and i'm going to play in that position you can hear that creates a nice sort of buzzy sound now we might call that a tone Kind of borrowed that name really from West African djembe playing. Okay, so there's my nice open tone sound. Now you can see what I'm doing, I make sure my hand is always bouncing off. Although it's just uh, some wood I'm hitting, it doesn't sound so good if I let my hand stay stuck. So I'm going to make sure my hand bounces off. Okay, okay, now the next sound is a bass. Now, this is where often people make a mistake with a cajon. With the bass, you need to maybe not reach as low down as you think. Some people reach really far down, and actually it doesn't sound so good. So on your cajon, you can kind of experiment around. So you get a nice bass sound. You see on my one, where the name, the logo um, of the people who made this cajon, and this is a Spanish cajon, this one, that is there. There we go. So that is the best bass sound I'm going to get. So let's just play some bass notes, bass, bass. And again, you see what I'm doing, I'm trying to make sure my hands, although they're alternating, I'm always hitting the same place. So I'm not hitting sideways like that. I'm trying to hit that same place, that bass, one hand after the other, to get the nice bass in. Okay, should we do some tone? Ah, sounds completely different. One, two, three, four, bass. Let's swap to the tone after four. One, Two, three, four, two. And so, great, so here we've got different sounds. Now we also have a louder sound, or a higher pitch sound, which kind of is a, a, sometimes they call it a slap sound. Now, depending on your cajon, it works in different places. Some people kind of move slightly more towards the corners to get that. You see, that sounds different to there. Sounds higher. Now I often find sometimes I spread my fingers out, and also with this, I do kind of leave my fingers stuck to it a little bit. I found that helps create that sound. So basically, I should be able to get three different cajon sounds. So can we do what I just did, but really slowly? We're going to do four bass, four tone, then four slap. Should we try it? A one, two, three, bass, bass, tone, slap. And stop, yeah, <laughs> that was really, really fun. Well done, everybody. Good. Now, one thing, obviously, you are basically using your bare hands to hit a piece of wood. So, you know, that is a hard surface. So 
please don't ever play so much it hurts your hands and if your hands do ever hurt you know stop playing but one thing you find very helpful give your hands a good rub together a bit of a squeeze afterwards um, that would just help sort of calm them down a little bit but actually with a cajon it's one of those things you don't need to play too loudly to get a nice sound often if you are hitting it really really hard it's sometimes not quite an, as, as nice a sound so yeah don't play too hard and actually you'll often find that because the cajon compared to a lot of other musical instruments isn't actually a particularly loud instrument sometimes when it's played in a band with some other instrumentalists they might mic it up they might put a microphone just in the hole or near the hole at the back uh, and that will just help the um, help it be heard a little bit better so that is the three sounds that we're going to be able to use how to play our cajon now this rhythm that came from this place here this rhythm is called the marinara rhythm okay marinara rhythm and we've got to count to six now this kind of is very much in this style marinara is a dance i'll tell you a bit more about it in a minute but this rhythm it goes one two three four five six one two three four five six easy okay just count to six now often in a lot of western music we're not used to count to six we used to count to four but one two three four five six gives it a nice little sort of movement to it uh, that's why it makes it a dance now what we're going to do, we're just going to, on our um, chest here, we're just going to tap that one hand after the other. One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 Now, I instantly did it where I started with my strong hand. One, two, three, four, five, six. So make sure you always start with your strong hand. Um, now, we're going to change the rhythm. We're going to go one, two, and three, four, five, six. One, two, and three, four, five, six. So, but in between the two and the three, we're going to put a little and. One, two, and three, four, five, six. One, two, and three, four, five, six. One, two, and three, four, five, six. That makes sense. Shall we try it? Here, yeah, ready? I'll count six and we'll try it. Four, five, six. One, two, and three, 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 four, five, six. Great, and stop. Now, I'm wondering, when we kept playing over and over again, did you always start with your strong hand? Was number one always your strong hand? Can we try it again? Let's see if we can get it right. Ready? Four, five, six. One, two, and three, 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 four, five, six. Two, and three, four, five, six. One, two, and three, four, five, six. Ah, there we go. So you see, that ends up being a bit trickier than we thought it was going to be. And what it is is because we're going one, two, and three, four, five, six. We're actually playing seven times because we put the little and in, which of course is an odd number. Which means if you keep doing just one hand after the other. The next time you play around the six, you'll be starting with the opposite hand to we did before. So somewhere in it, we need to do two notes in a row with one hand to make sure always that number one is our strong hand. How are we going to do that? Well, let's make sure the number one and the number two is our strong hand. So it's going to be one, two. Okay? And then the and is there. So I'm going to do it really slowly. One, two, and. That makes sense? One, two, and three, four, five, six. One, two, and three, four, five. Five, six. One, two, and three, four, 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 five, six. One, two, and three, five, six. One, two, and three, four, five, six. One, two, 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 three, four, five, six. Four, five, six. One, two, three, four. And stop. Great. Now, when we put this on the cajon, I'm just going to change my camera angle so you can see my cajon. So. So what we're going to do, we're going to start off by putting our strong hand as a base, okay? And we're going to leave that as a base. And um, we're going to have our weaker hand up here as a 10. So ready? Four, five, six, one, two, and three, four, five, six, one, two, and three. Great. Now, one thing we're going to change. Number one is still going to be our strong hand, but we're going to move number one up to play the tone at the top. Just the number one, then it's back there. Should we try it? Four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three. Well done.
done. Now the only thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that number one, rather than being a toad, it's going to be a, a slap. So it's a louder sound. Should we try it? Four, five, six, one, two. Well done, great. So that is our Maranoa rhythm from Peru. It's a courtship dance. So that means it's a dance of love where maybe there'll be a man and a woman who would rather be playing it and, and dancing that to, with each other as well. So you've learned that rhythm. So there's lots of other things you can do on the cajon. Please come back another time and you can see some more things we can do. Thanks so much, bye.